Hello, and welcome to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. In case you have any questions regarding this program, please write us at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Thank you, and enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome back to Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. We are here once again recording with Dr. Sara Figueredo. Uh, she is the uh, research and general director of the Institute. And hello, doctor. How are you? I'm very well, Louise. Always a pleasure to be here speaking with you. Great, great to have you back. Uh, so um, today we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, which is stem cells for knee surgery or to avoid knee surgery or after knee surgery and hip replacement. Is that correct, doctor? That's right. You know, and we can take this one step further. So definitely stem cells to replace or avoid the need for uh, a prosthetic or a knee or hip replacement. Also, um, post-surgery, so if there's an uh, arthroscopic surgery of the knee or the hip, uh, post-surgery recovery is, uh, is a huge um, uh, use, uh, or uh, stem cells are a huge use in this area as well. So in the case to avoid knee surgery, what, um, what are the procedures to do this treatment, doctor? Yes, um, very good question, Louise, because what we do first is we take a very uh, thorough intake and an orthopedic assessment of what uh, the damage is and what is required. So basically, we go by images as well as uh, usually a, an MRI or, uh, or x-rays or CT scans. Uh, of the injured areas or the areas in question. And, um, and then we do a prognosis and, a, and an assessment as to whether or not stem cells would be useful for that patient in order to avoid more lengthy, costly, and uh, longer downtime of a surgery with a uh, hip or knee replacement. In the case the patient already has uh, the surgery, uh, I suppose stem cells can also help, right, doctor? Yes, actually, very, very much so, because we have two scenarios here, okay, that we're, we're talking about in terms of surgery combined with stem cells. So we need to remember one is uh, possibly post-surgery or even uh, of, of a corrective surgery. Now, I'm not talking about prosthetic or um, any kind of a replacement surgery, just a corrective surgery, uh, like an arthroscopic surgery where a doctor might go in, uh, an orthopedic surgeon might go in and clean up the joint, um, perhaps even mend a ligament or a tendon, uh, and so on and so forth. So in that case, we can go in at the same time of the surgery and just flood uh, the region with stem cells in order to literally uh, increase uh, healing and speed up recovery, but at least fivefold. So much less uh, uh, of a downtime. And so this is the case with either uh, a corrective surgery in that sense, or uh, a replacement surgery where we, again, we go in at the same time, it can be pre, it can be during the surgery, literally, or it can be uh, post surgery, perhaps a, a patient's already had um, the surgery and they come in months later to just uh, reinforce the area. However, when we do it at the same time of surgery, we have seen a phenomenal um, uh, increase in the rates of recovery and patients are at, um, you know, in, in their recovery, they, they're at month 10 as, uh, and literally and chronologically, they're at month one and they're at, uh, but a recovery rate as if they're at uh, 10, 10 months uh, of post recovery. So it's quite phenomenal. The exercises that they're able to perform, uh, the degree of pain that is completely, uh, well, by then it's, it's gone. Um, and, uh, and just, uh, just a phenomenal recovery and uh, range of motion and so on and so forth. 
And may I ask you, are most of, most of your patients um, athletes or elderly people or both? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. You know what? We have a really big, a good mixture of both because we do have a lot of uh, elderly patients that are candidates for hip or knee replacements. So we have this discussion with them, with them very readily. Uh, and then uh, as well as athletes who are uh, in both cases, either trying to avoid surgery uh, or, um, or looking to combine the, the stem cells with uh, a form of surgery, whether it's a replacement or a corrective surgery. In the case of athletes, we don't often see uh, hip or knee replacements very often at all because they tend to be younger and it's more of a corrective uh, Uh, type of a situation where stem cells can very often replace the need for a surgery. And let me ask you, um, is this treatment for all the joints or just especially for um, knee and hip replacements? Yep. That's it. So, Louise, you always come up with really great questions. It, it is a very widespread um, type of a treatment for any joint. Absolutely. I mean, we've done You know, we, we are talking here specifically about corrective knee and hip because it's so um, it's such a common uh, type of a surgery or a, or a replacement or prosthetic or corrective uh, surgery, as well as shoulders, actually. That's quite common, too, because of rotator cuff injuries. Um, but we're yeah, we're, we're speaking here more specifically as to those joints because it's they're so common. However, We do stem cell treatments on all the joints of the body, wherever it's required, where, whether it's a disc or vertebral joint or the vertebrae or um, the fingers, which we see and do a lot of in osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, um, a bunch of ankles and, of course, knees and hips. And uh, what's another big one? So, of course, the shoulder and even elbows. So yes, we were all over the place with it. This question, um, is this is because I, I, I suffered the condition. Um, I dislocated my shoulder some years ago. Uh, well, like 20 years ago, actually. But I still have like a, like a little pain and I feel that, that um, specific shoulder like very weak. Um, I suffer a few dislocations after the, the big one, of, after the first one. Does the stem cell help the ligaments uh, to heal that shoulder? Yes. Um, yes, that's a really interesting question because in that case, there, there are probably a couple of things going on there. Um, so there, there most likely is some sort of degeneration of, of, the, um, uh, of the joint itself. And then uh, probably a laxity as well as scar tissue in the ligaments and tendons. And absolutely, in those cases, uh, we would, uh, you know, with my motto being no stones, uh, leaving no stones unturned, we would inject into the joint, we would inject into the ligament and uh, tendon itself in order to regenerate, reduce scarring, uh, regenerate damage, any sort of fiber tears can, will be uh, repaired and um, and yeah it's, it's about just flooding the area and getting all of the uh, the tissues uh, that could be affected may i ask you in, in case um, the patient already have the x-rays can they bring those x-rays uh, for your evaluation or do they have to get new x-rays here um, no No, that's actually, yes, no. You know what, what we do is um, before a patient actually comes down for treatment to, to Guatemala, uh, and I say down because most of our patients are coming from up north, North America, um, we do all of the assessment beforehand so that they're not here. They don't come all the way here and then we have to reject them. So, so yes, Louise, what we do is we do all of the pre-screening and assessment prior to the patient coming down. Uh, to Guatemala, just in case we, uh, if they're not a good candidate, we don't want them to come all the way here uh, in hopes that they're going to have a treatment. So we ensure that uh, we do all of the assessment uh, prior to that. And if, uh, and, and in regards to your specific question about to having to redo x-rays or um, images, 
if the images are recent enough uh, to where there hasn't been further uh, damage or wear and tear, uh, then those are sufficient, the ones that the patient already has. However, um, if, uh, if you know, we have patients calling us up and uh, they have images that are years old, uh, in that case, we definitely do need newer ones. And, and again, we assess all of that before they come down for treatment. Oh, I see. In this case, these stem cells are applied locally, right? That's right. Yes, we, we inject it in the, right into the joint, uh, right into the area of, uh, of damage and treatment. So again, it could be the joint, the tendon, the ligament. Um, and literally, in the case of uh, the surgeries, we literally just flood the area uh, right before they're going to be closed up or uh, before the finish of the surgery. We literally flood the area with uh, a combination of uh, stem cells and growth factors and exosomes. And you just see uh, and a, a proprietary cocktail that we, uh, that we have at, at the Stem Cell Healing Institute and uh, just see phenomenal results with, uh, uh, with that. Okay, after the stem cell treatment, how long the results will last? Oh, yes, absolutely. So um, it's really important. Uh, a couple of things are really important to keep in mind. Um, the level of wear and tear post-treatment, just like any, just like normal life, um, you know, if you're a heavily active person, person, then you want to keep in mind the normal wear and tear of, of life. And then, um, and of course, rehab, you know, we have to do, uh, uh, it's really important to, to keep up on rehabilitation and strengthening of the supporting muscles and, um, and uh, in order to support those joints. So that's really, really important is the rehabilitation because uh, over the long haul, the, you know, since the damage, the patient is probably less mobile, um, using their uh, muscles much less. In the case of a knee, uh, a patient with a knee injury, for instance, we see uh, atrophied thigh muscles and ha hamstring muscles and, uh, and so, on, so on and so forth. And so there is no uh, muscle support for that joint because they've been immobile or because of the pain, uh, they just haven't been moving so much. So uh, in that case, the rehabilitation in order to increase uh, the strength and the size of the muscles, the supporting muscles are so important. So, and that goes for the hip joint, the knee joints, the rot rotator cuff, uh, you know, muscles and joint, uh, the rotator cuff joints and so on and so forth. So it's really important, the rehabilitation and strengthening aspects, uh, along with just uh, normal wear and tear. I see. Um, doctor, is there any side effects or risk um, about the stem cells? With the stem cells themselves, we have seen no risks whatsoever. Um, the, it, of course, there is risk when there is surgery, uh, when you break the skin barrier, the risk of infection, and so on and so forth. However, with the stem cells themselves, there is no risk whatsoever. Great. And um, I need to ask you, how do you harvest these stem cells, doctor? Yes. You know, we find that in, in this case with uh, these types of injuries, the bone marrow stem cells, the patient's own bone marrow stem cells are, um, are extremely effective. And the reason for that, several reasons. Uh, so the adult mesenchymal stem cells are the only type of stem cells that we like to use at the Stem Cell Healing Institute. Um, and uh, in this case, coming from the bone marrow. And we have a proprietary um, method of growing uh, or expanding the stem cells within the body uh, three days prior to harvest. So that is really, really important because we, uh, the numbers, the numbers are extremely important when we're dealing with uh, a treatment such as this, because we're looking to inject hundreds of millions of stem cells per joint, when it, especially when it's a bigger joint. Um, and so by expanding them in vivo uh, or in the live person, um, it is the most effective because it's in the perfect environment. We don't have to 
harvest and incubate in a lab. Um, and, uh, and it's just, uh, and, and they're brand new stem cells, non-toxic and just amazing numbers. And, and again, uh, the numbers are so important when it comes to healing these types of injuries. Okay, doctor, and let's talk about the recovery. Um, the recovery will be a lot faster if you do the stem cell treatment um, in compared to not doing it, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm thinking of one uh, patient in particular. Uh, she's uh, happy to be uh, uh, to be known as a uh, as a stem cell uh, patient. Uh, three times over, different joints, and uh, her name is Diana, and she has just been, uh, she recently had a double hip replacement, um, and uh, we did uh, stem cells in conjunction with the hip replacement at the same time, and she was literally a month later with both, you know, we're talking bilateral hip replacement, which is not very common. Um, it's usually one or one at a time, And uh, she had both done at the same time with stem cells. And a month later, she was doing exercises and pain-free um, the way that somebody uh, would be at six months down the road with one hip replacement. So it was wow. just phenomenal and just phenomenal. Yeah. Excellent. Um, doctor, I always ask you, and I'm going to ask you again, If I forgot to ask you anything, and if you want to add something to this podcast. Yeah, you know what? I, I want to quickly just, I know I, I talk about this with every podcast, but just in case there are listeners that have, ha haven't heard uh, me in the past, just the, the, the importance of, of uh, reiterating the comprehensiveness of our treatment. So, you know, we don't only go in and do a stem cell treatment uh, for a patient, uh, just a stem cell per se. What we do is we do a little bit of a preamble. We start uh, the patient with a pre-treatment protocol before they even come for treatment uh, with key dietary um, uh, changes uh, and uh, key supplemental factors that we have them add, uh, supplements. And, um, and nothing that's not sustainable. It's really important that we're, we're basically just trying to create uh, a, a milieu or an environment of the body for the best possible results, best possible uh, environment for uh, rejuvenation and the stem cells. So we start with that. And then when they come down, we do a total detox program, which is a nutritional IV with um, uh, organic uh, suppositories that work with it with the liver detox as well as B shots, B vitamin shots. And we combine that with growth hormone therapy as well as oxygen therapy and um, stem cell enhancement formula. It's our proprietary blend of key herbs and minerals uh, in order to just hasten and keep the stem cells uh, uh, humming along. And, uh, and another thing that's really important that I don't want to negate the importance of is psychological and emotional well-being. So that's something that we address as well, because our well-being goes way beyond our physical body. So it's really important that we address that uh, as well. So it's basically a total overhauling here. <laughs> uh, that's, that's right. That's right. Excellent, doctor. Uh, so by the end of this podcast, you will find all the information how to contact Dr. Figueredo and also all the information about our social media. And I want to thank Dr. Figueredo for uh, this incredible podcast. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Luis. You have a be beautiful day. You too. You take care. You too. If you want to contact us at the Stem Cell Healing Institute or Dr. Sarah Fioredo, you may do it by calling us. In North America, you may dial plus 1-209-690-7836. Also, if you want to write us by WhatsApp, you may add plus 502-4220-7297. Please send us an email at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. And don't forget to visit our website, stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Also, if you like to recommend our treatments, you may find us on Facebook, 
at Stem Cell Healing Institute. Please follow us on Instagram at Stem Cell HI. If you want to recommend this podcast, please refer to anchor.fm slash stem cell healing. Also, you may find us with that very same name on Spotify. If you want to watch our videos, please go to Dr. Sarah Figueredo. That is on YouTube. Thank you.